Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt adventure deck which is playing with all the new adventures from Throne of Eldrain and the two major payoff cards in the deck for playing all these adventure cards our Lucky Clover, which is a 2-mana artifact that says whenever we cast an adventure, instant or sorcery spell, we get to copy it and choose new targets for the copy. So that's very powerful when almost all the cards in our deck have an adventure, instant or sorcery associated with them. And then we also have the full playset of Edgewall Innkeeper, 1-mana for a 1-1 human peasant that says whenever we cast a creature spell that has an adventure, we get to draw a card. So the Innkeeper rewards us for the creature half, whereas the Lucky Clover rewards us for the instant and sorcery half of the card instead. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, if we actually sort a deck by curve, it looks a little bit different, since of course Lovestruck Beast is a kind of a one-drop, since we want to use the adventure first, Bonecrusher Giant is more of a two-drop, and Beanstalk Giant counts more as a three-drop, whereas Order of the Midnight we're often casting later in the game. So this is more like how the curve actually looks like, with the Once Upon a Time sometimes being cast for free. So at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Foulmire Knight, 1 mana for a 1-1 one -one Death Touch, and the Adventure Profane Insight lets us draw a card at the cost of 1 life at instant speed. Then of course we've got our playset of Edgewall Innkeeper, we've got 4 copies of a Lovestruck Beast, which can make a 1-1 one -one human creature token with the Adventure, and then is a 5-5 that can only attack as long as we control a 1-1 one -one creature, but between the human token from the beast, the innkeeper and the Falmar knight, we've got plenty of 1-1 one -one creatures to let the beast get in there. Then at 2 mana we've got our full playset of Once Upon a Time, which if we cast it as our first spell in the game, we can cast for free, an instant that lets us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, we can reveal a creature or land, and put it into our hand and the rest goes on the bottom. So this can find every card in the deck outside of Lucky Clover, so that gives us a ton of utility. Then we've got our four copies of Lucky Clover, which is a card that really makes the deck tick if we can get one or two copies of Lucky Clover in play, or deck starts doing some pretty unfair things. Then we also have the full playset of Bonecrusher Giant, which is a reason why we're splashing red in an otherwise blank green adventure deck. But the giant is quite powerful, especially with Lucky Clover, because the instant adventure here, Stomp, for 2 mana lets us deal 2 damage to any target. But if we have a Lucky Clover in play, that can quickly start adding up and potentially just burn the opponent out if we have enough Lucky Clovers and Bonecrusher Giants. So that's a great way to help us close out the game. And then of course the creature half, 3 mana for a 4-3, with upside is still quite powerful as well. Then at 3 mana, of course we can cast the Lovestruck Beast or the Bonecrusher Giant as well, sometimes we'll just draw a card with the Falmar Knight, so we have a lot of action at 3 mana. But we also have the full playset of Murderous Rider, we're mostly interested in the adventure half of the card, Swift End, which lets us destroy target creature or planeswalker at the cost of 2 life at instant speed, so the fact that it's an instant also plays well with Once Upon a Time and the Falmar Knight, Profane Insight, so the instant is a nice bonus, and then afterwards we still get access to a 2-3 a life-linking knight that when it dies is put on the bottom of our library instead of uh, in the graveyard, so we can't get it back with the Order of Midnight, but uh, still quite good. And then we also have four copies of Beanstalk Giant, which is a big finisher in this deck. First off we can use the Adventure, Fertile Footsteps, which lets us search our library for any basic land card and put it on the battlefield untapped. So it essentially only costs two mana if we can make use of that untapped land right away. And then later we get Beanstalk Giant for seven mana, whose power and toughness is equal to the number of lands we control, so it can get quite big, and especially with Lucky Clover, using the Fertile Footsteps can be quite powerful since it can ramp us very quickly and give us a ton of mana to work with. And Beanstalk Giant is also the reason why we have so many basic lands in the deck, so in the late game we can still search them up, especially if we have a Lucky Clover or two in play. And then finally we have two copies of Order of Midnight, two mana for a 2-2 flyer that can block, but we're usually more interested in the Alter Fate half of the card, which is an adventure at sorcery speed that lets us return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand, and especially with the Lucky Clover, we can really get a ton of value out of the Alter Fate. And then our mana base, we've got a lot of basics, but we also have the full playset of Fabled Passage that can search up all those basic lands besides the Beanstalk Giant. And then we have four copies of Overgrown Tomb, four copies of Blood Crypt, seven forests, two mountains, and five swamps. So that's the deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. 
This hand could work out if Once Upon a Time finds a green source, but there's no Clover, there's no Innkeeper, so I think we're looking for a more exciting starting seven here. All right, this uh, will do. And what to put on the bottom? It's either the Beast or the Falmar Knight here, and I think I'll bottom the Falmar. Because I can play Innkeeper, make a token early on. And then turn 3, I'm just going to play the Beast to draw a card with Innkeeper. Alright, Gilded Goose and Paradise Root. So, some sort of green ramp deck. Ooh, Lucky Clover is pretty lucky. So I'll play the Innkeeper. And then hope to draw a third land here. So we get to go turn 2 Clover, turn 3 Giant. Get two lands. It's gonna be a Falmar Knight. Yeah, I think I'm still playing Clover. And then if I don't get there on turn three, I can still cantrip with the Knight. But the upside is quite high if we can get there here. Opponent could play a Oko to mess us up. Looks like a Sultai build. Hopefully no Vraska to destroy my Clover. Alright, how about a turn 3 Nissa? It's pretty effective too. Although I do have a Murderous Rider, so if I get lucky and find a Black Source... Ooh, nice. Alright. I think I'm not gonna mess around, just... kill Nissa and the land while we can. And since I'm not blocking, I might as well attack for one. Now we are down to 11. That did cost 4 life. But uh, 4 life I'm happy to pay. Opponent's looking at my lucky clover. I think this is a Vraska. Decides to kill Innkeeper instead. Bonecrusher is excellent, so... Things are going nicely. I can search up Forest Mountain, probably. And then Bone Crusher kills Paradise Roots. And I think kills Vraska here, too. Well, opponent had turn 3 in this uh, turn for Vraska, but uh, we're definitely keeping up here. And Goose makes food. And another Clover. So I could Clover draw 3 with the Falmar Knights. I guess that's reasonable. And I want to do this now, so I can hit my land drop. Beanstalk Giant is excellent with double clover and a lance. Alright. Nice, nice. Let's get this Innkeeper in play. I guess I might as well Beast first and play Innkeeper next turn, so if they do have removal, they don't kill my Innkeeper. So our deck's going off. Uh, lots of creatures uh, chilling in adventure land. Could be another Nissa. It's gonna be Cavalier of Thorns instead. Finds Temple. Ooh, and mills over Garrick. Well, we can chum block Cavalier for a while so it doesn't die and get something back from the graveyard at least. And in the meantime, we'll have some fun with uh, Beanstalk Giant. Do want to get uh, a second mountain, probably, and another swamp. So I'll get one of each. And then, could just cast the Beanstalk Giants. 
That doesn't sound bad. Or I could go Innkeeper and draw some cards. Yeah, let's draw some cards. I hear drawing cards is pretty good. Alright, this uh, Bone Crusher represents a ton of damage too. Do I need to use it now? Not really. Just uh, play the Bone Crusher from Exile. Alright. It's gonna be a Wicked Wolf. Kills Bone Crusher Giants. That's fine. And Cavalier's gonna hang back. Another Innkeeper, alright. I guess I'll fetch first. Once upon a time. So I'm basically looking for more Bone Crusher Giants to help me close out the game at this point. Another Beanstalk Giant seems pretty good. And then I guess I can just cast this one from Exile first. More Innkeepers. Not in a hurry. The goose is gonna lay another egg. So I'm probably gonna start my turn by uh, searching up some more lands. Fraska probably wants to just kill my Lucky Clover. If they're gonna plus. Yeah, we're just super far ahead on resources. So yeah, let's start by searching with the giants. Get some lands out of the deck. And yeah, my opponent has seen enough. We were gonna draw some more cards, eventually find another Bone Crusher Giant or Murderous Rider to clear a path and uh, kill the opponent in one giant attack. Sweet, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's not great, so we're missing one of the payoffs, like the Innkeeper or the Lucky Clover. I can fetch up a Mountain for Giants, but then Double Order of the Midnight is kind of awkward, so... It's potentially keepable, but I think we can do better with a Mulligan. And yeah, this will do. So we'll keep this. And then... I could get greedy and bottom a land. Don't think I want to bottom the Falmar Knights. So the Once Upon a Time basically wants to find a black source so we can play double Lucky Clover and then draw a ton of cards with the Falmar Knights. So I think I can get away with bottoming a forest here. Facing turn one mountain. Definitely want to take our draw step first. Even though there's a temptation of casting Once Upon a Time in the opponent's end step, there's no reason to do so. And we do have some one drops that we could draw into here with the Once Upon a Time and play on turn one. So I think I will cast it now. And if I find a green one drop like the Lovestruck Beast, I can play turn one. Or I can just fetch up a swamp with the Fabled Passage. Since now I've uh, drawn a black source, so I don't need to get one with the Once Upon a Time. Yeah, let's get the Beast. But I think I'm still going to just uh, fetch up a Swamp. Since I probably want to play some Clovers before making the tokens. Like with the Lovestruck Beast, the adventure is maybe a bit less important to copy with a Lucky Clover. But uh, we need to get the stat plan out of the way anyway. Alright, so I'm not opposed to just playing a Lucky Clover here. And then we'll see what we want to do next turn. 
Now our deck doesn't really have any built-in life gain. And we do lose quite a bit of life with some of our adventures, especially if we try and copy them with Lucky Clover. So we do have to be mindful of our life total here as well. I could just go Lucky Clover, make three tokens, which can trade for the war boss at the very least. I don't want to use the adventure on the Falmar Knight, and just casting the Falmar Knight is kind of unexciting. Alright, so we've got some 1 1 tokens. Chandra Acolyte of Flame can get back a shock or make some 1 1 tokens. Yeah, so I'm happy to double block the Legion War Boss. And I guess I might as well triple block in case of a shock. Do I want to trade for a goblin? Not really, since I still need a token so the beast can attack potentially. So I think this is fine. Just triple block to make sure. But the 10th Street Dodger as a 2-2 is definitely going to be a problem. And I, again, don't really want to lose life with the adventure. So I guess I'm just going to play the Beast and then play a 1-1 Death Touch. Yeah, the Mono Red matchup doesn't seem amazing for the deck to be completely honest, just because we aren't the fastest deck at pressuring the opponents, and uh, we have a lot of life loss between the Falmar Knight and the adventure on our Murderous Rider. We do of course have a 2-3 lifelink in Murderous Rider too, but that can be answered pretty easily. So Dodger puts us to 3. So next turn we're dead to Dodger plus Pitter, but a Bonecrusher Giant was a great top deck. So I get to kill Dodger, Chandra, and Scorch Spitter all at once. So I guess I'll start by attacking Chandra with the Beast. I expect my opponent to chum block anyway. Question is, do I want my opponent to chum block? Probably. And then I should do this now. And I can't afford to use the adventure on the Falmar Knight, otherwise I would die. So I'll just play another 1-1 Death Touch here. So cards I want to draw the most. Another Bone Crusher Giant, a Beanstalk Giant would be okay, Murderous Rider just as a 2-3 lifelink. Opponent finds another Stin Street Dodger and a Chandra Spitfire, which they can play next turn. I guess I'll attack with everyone. And then I'm just gonna play our Bone Crusher Giant on defense. All right, could be dead here, if they have another shock. It's going to be a light of the stage, finds Cavalcade and land. All right, need to top deck here, but we found a forest, so pretty dead now. Can attack with everyone, opponent blocks a token, they would take... 11, so they would be dead to another Bone Crusher Giant if they block with just the uh, Spitfire on a token, so they should probably chum block the Beast. But if we did indeed have a Bone Crusher Giant, then they would be dead anyway, since then I could just kill all their creatures and Cavalcade wouldn't do anything. So they played it safe here, which uh, is understandable, but we're still dead to Dodger plus Cavalcade. And 
and Chandra plus Shock will do it too. So could have taken some slightly different lines along the way. I think we played fine, but uh, yeah, again, kind of a tough matchup when we have so much built-in life loss. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hands, not terrible. It's kind of missing Clover or Innkeeper to be really exciting. But uh, once upon a time can maybe find Innkeeper, so I guess I'll try it. Turn one our Boreal Grazer. Some sort of Field of the Dead deck. So the reach that uh, Giant provides to close out the game is pretty important since the ground is going to get pretty stalled very quickly here. Alright, perfect Innkeeper, so let's once upon a time find another Innkeeper or a land. How greedy do we get? I think I'm probably going to need this Innkeeper just to draw me Clovers, which are also pretty important in a matchup. Get the Innkeeper out there. Spiral. Put Temple in play. Yeah, Grazer into Spiral. That's a good start. Point has four lands in play on turn two here. Beanstalk Giant's not bad. Guess I'll attack. I could shock with the Giant, but I'm probably just playing another Innkeeper here. And then next turn I can hard cast Order of Midnight to just draw two, hit my land drops. If I draw lands, then I can maybe hard cast a Lovestruck Beast. Alright, it's going to be an Oko, so maybe this is a slightly different deck since we're seeing two Temple of Mystery, two Temple Garden, so that's pretty unlikely for a Field of the Dead deck. So it could just be a banned ramp deck featuring Grazer and uh, Grow Spiral. Opponent's gonna turn Innkeeper into an Elk. Ooh, Clover. So we'll start by attacking Oko. Alright, so I get to take out Oko. With Giant, I think that's worth it, because if I play Clover, they could also turn it into an Elk, and who knows what happens. Just want to make sure we get rid of the Planeswalker while we can. And then, uh, yeah, ideally find a land next turn. Teferi bounces our Innkeeper. Alright, perfect. So I could Beanstalk Giant, search up Forest, play Innkeeper. Or I can just go Clover plus Innkeeper, and then next turn I get to Double Giant, which is pretty exciting. Could also Shock to kill Teferi. But against this type of deck, I don't mind my opponent keeping Teferi for a turn. So yeah, let's uh, set up with the Clover here. Alright, apparently uh, the auto-tapper didn't want me to cast my Innkeeper. I guess it prioritizes tapping basic lands. Trust well, I have a plan. that's disappointing since we had two single green cards in hand, so that's a little strange. Alright, I mean, I guess it's not a disaster, because next turn Beanstalk Giant gives me two lands anyway. So I can get two forests, so I can go Innkeeper plus make two humans with a beast, or I can get forest and then mountain to shock the fairy while I can. Um, could also kill, I guess, the Krasis, maybe that's better here. Yeah, let's do that. Double shock the Krasis. And attack the fairy. Alright, so I should have had an extra innkeeper in play. 
Hopefully doesn't cost us too badly. Now I've got some more options. Probably start here still. Right, Murder Strider is going to be pretty good. Nothing to get back with Order of Midnight, so we'll just make a token here. Alright, so we're doing okay here. We've got our card draw engines in play. Lots of cards waiting on an adventure here. Pretty aggressive attack from the Krasis. Are we going to see a time wipe? Yep. Picks up Krasis again. Wipes our board, so... Losing Innkeeper is a setback, but at least we still have our Clover. And uh, yeah, how about we get back all the Innkeepers? And now with Double Clover in play, these Bone Crusher Giants can do a ton of damage. Finding another Beanstalk Giant to give us a couple more lands would be quite useful here. So that's definitely one of our better draws. With Double Lucky Clover in play, using a Beanstalk Giant finds three untapped lands, so we can basically do it for free. Ooh, mass manipulation for two, stealing my two innkeepers. That's kind of rude. But at least my opponent doesn't have any adventures. So they just didn't want us drawing the cards. Alright. So now we have seven mana. Could just cast a Beanstalk Giant. Could Bone Crusher to kill all the opponent's creatures, but I don't really care about my opponent having a couple 1-1s. One so casting Beanstalk Giant seems fine, or I can just make three tokens and play a beast. Sure. And then I guess we can also play Order of Midnights. Could also play Bone Crusher. Suppose it's slightly better. I don't want to lose too much life, especially with Murderous Rider and Double Clover, but uh, the Bone Crusher applies a bit more pressure here. And then if they play a big Krasis, I've got Murderous Rider to clean that up. And there's Nissa. It's also a good target for the Murderous Rider. Alright, now that we've found a second murder Rider, I'm totally fine using the first one. And, uh, get rid of some stuff. So we'll kill Nyssa. And then I'll kill the forests. And probably the Gilded Goose. And then we get to attack. And then I probably just want to cast my Murderous Rider here just to start gaining a bit of life back. So Bone Crusher Giant represents 6 damage with double clover, so they're definitely getting in range. 
Might see them cast the Krasis here, which we can still kill with our Rider. Alright, Krasis for 5. Opponent's at 12. So, are they dead? If I Rider, kill 3 creatures. Bone Crusher Giants, kill 1 creature, deal 4. Opponent's at 8. Yeah, they should be pretty dead here. Alright, attack with all. Bam. Alright, so we managed to beat Bant Ramp. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. No clovers, no innkeepers, but we do have a once upon a time to maybe find innkeeper. And a reasonable curve of removal adventure creatures here. So I'll try it. And then hoping for an innkeeper. Definitely want to once upon a time right away, because there's multiple one drops I could find and want to cast. And I guess I'll take the Lovestruck Beast and make a token. Well, let's see what we're up against. Untapped Steam Vents for a Shocker or an Opt. So we'll attack for one, and then I'm probably going to take two to keep a Bone Crusher Giant. And I'm fine shocking my opponent end of turn if there's no better targets. Alright, it's going to be a Merchant of the Veil, vale, so maybe a Blue Red Phoenix deck, in which case I might be able to take out a Goblin Electromancer. Right, opponent does nothing. Yeah, I think I want to be mana efficient. But I will probably play the Lovestruck Beast here. Even though there's a small chance that my opponent could shock the 1-1 one -one and then the Beast can't attack. I think that's a risk I'm willing to take. Thrill of Possibility discards Phoenix, so yeah, if they can cast three one mana spells here, it could be in trouble. Looks like they're gonna set up for next turn to get back double Phoenix. And hopefully I can get a nice attack in with the beast. Alright, Falmar Knight means I have a bit of insurance. So I can either draw a card and play this as a 1-1, one -one, or I can play this as a 1-1 one -one and play Giant. I think I should just apply as much pressure as possible, which means playing Giants. Although they might also keep Phoenix on defense, in which case the Giant doesn't line up great. But I could always murder Strider one of them. So this is close. I think I'm just gonna cast the Falmar Knights as a 1-1 one -one Death Touch. And the reason we want to do this pre-combat is so if they do have a shock for the human, the beast can still attack at least. Opponent down to 8. And we'll play Giants. And of turn Opt. Well, the fact that they're using Opt is kind of interesting since I guess it implies they probably have more cheap spells like Opt in hand to get back Phoenix. Otherwise, you might want to hang on to Opt as a cheap instance to get to 3 for the Phoenix. They need to get back Arclight Phoenix. Don't really see them winning any other way. Right, so they're going to kick things off with another Opt. Merchant discards the third Phoenix. Wow. Well, finding three Arclight Phoenix in the top 17 cards is pretty lucky. 
and a shock to kill my Falmar Knights, so... Yeah, it's gonna be Triple Phoenix. Some of them are definitely gonna stay on defense. Let's see if they all stay back or if they're gonna split the difference. I suppose a Lovestruck Beast could attack. And if they double block, I can Murder Strider one of them. If they triple block, then I could just let two of them die. And Order of the Midnight can get back my Beast and replay it. Don't really want to trade Giant for Phoenix, that seems bad. Opponent does go with the triple blocks, so we will kill two of them. So order back the beast. And I could play the beast, I could play the order. Problem with playing the beast is if they have a shock for the token, then we can't attack. But given how this game is playing out, I think I need to take some risks. So it's going to be an Iron Crag Paramancer, plus a Lava Coil, which kills a human. So now the beast is unable to attack, since we are out of 1-1s in hand. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Do I Murder Strider the Phoenix attack with the Giant, or do I Murder Strider the Pyromancer so they can't kill my Giant? Because we know they have two merchants waiting in exile, so it's pretty likely for them to trigger Pyromancer at least once next turn. But maybe I should still kill Phoenix and then hope that the Giant can get across the finish line. Alright. And then I also get to play Order of Midnight, which is another evasive attacker. Opponent goes down to four. So I could easily be dead if my opponent plays a couple cantrips. Crackling Drake's also a good one. It's uh, 3 damage with Pyromancer, probably killing Giant. So, opponent takes out Order of Midnight. Now the Giant only deals 2 damage to the opponent if a spell targets it, not when an ability targets it. So they could have taken out Giant if they wanted to. Alright, Falmar Knights is actually a pretty good draw since that lets me attack with the Beast as well. So we'll start by drawing with the Falmar Knights. Order of Midnight, also pretty good. So I could order back the Order, which can order back the Falmar Knight, but then I can't play the 1-1. So I should probably just start by playing the 1-1. And attack with both. That's a pretty good trade for us. And yeah, I think I order back the order here. And play a grindy game. Because it seems unlikely for my opponent to be able to get back Triple Phoenix with only two cards in hand. Definitely not impossible since they get a draw step and they can cantrip into another cantrip. But that's the hope. Alright, it's going to be... Merchant of the Veil on defense. Times two. And a Lucky Clover. Alright, now we're talking. So I guess I should just attack with both. Hoping they just double block my Bonecrusher Giants. And then I can play Clover, get back Giants, and burn them out. So we should have just enough mana for this. Get back giants. Get back beasts. And our opponent knows what's incoming. Giant for 4 damage to close out the game. Alright, so that was a very close one. Opponent got back triple phoenix, but then was unable to get them back a second time. So yeah, the deck is definitely capable of winning fair games, where it doesn't have Clover or Innkeeper to provide a ton of advantage. But of course it helps when you have those cards in play. 
So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.